I say, uh, please say whether you are able to see this YouTube or not. Because I think I have uh, done this YouTube sharing now. Just try to see, I say. Yes, sir. I can see. Okay, okay. Okay, you can see in the YouTube now. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's good. Yeah. So uh, now you can. Uh, now let's start. Yeah. So first of all, I, I thank you very much uh, for joining us. Yeah. It's, it's a random stuff that we decided to start <laughs> this online session for ICM members and all the sports medicine and sports, uh, you know, science. Uh, the person who are enthusiasts who love sports medicine all day and uh, and uh, sports, uh, you know, dentistry is something very new to me also because I have never yeah. heard of that. But I think <laughs> it is coming up like anything, and we are very fortunate that. Uh, uh, you know, our uh, member, uh, one of the member, Dr. Sneha Divekar, uh, is, uh, is will be shedding some light on uh, sports dentistry. Uh, uh, Dr. Sneha is a practicing uh, dentistry and from, she has been practicing since 15 years. So very senior uh, practitioner. <laughs> and she is a consultant uh, sports dentist since five years. She runs, uh, you know, her private uh, setup at uh, dental fitness and a polyclinic at uh, Karp Nagar, that is Pune. Uh, and uh, she is focusing on cosmetic dentistry as well as sports dentistry with various multi-speciality medical and dental, uh, you know, specialists visiting her clinic. And she has done uh, some, uh, you know, certification also like international certification in aesthetic dentistry and oral rehabilitation under uh, New York University School of Dentistry, USA, a fellowship in aesthetic dentistry from Germany. He's a faculty as a sports, uh, you know, dentist in ISST Pune and conduct various uh, courses like a certificate in sports dentistry for uh, dentists in association with ISST. And uh, and I think this is the first of kind uh, such course for Indian uh, dentists. And uh, uh, she has conducted various uh, workshops on sports dentistry, uh, you know, for uh, various certificate programs. Nearly 50 dentists have completed these courses. Uh, since the launching of this course in uh, July 2018, and she is expert at doing all kind of cosmetic, uh, dental treatment, you know, dental care of athlete, uh, customized, you know, superior quality, uh, bile and bite, uh, you know, what you call mouth guard uh, fabrication, along with the long term dental trauma management of athlete. Uh, she kept, you know, sports dental care uh, guidance for young professional athletes at various schools also and various sport, uh, sports club also in Pune. And she has been uh, facilitated as a local, state, and national speaker in post sports dentistry in various dental program and conference during the pandemic as well. She has given various online lecture and workshop on sport dentistry. Her article on sports uh, dentistry, uh, you know, that got published in the Fandom uh, magazine, a dental uh, rich magazine, Ecta Scientific uh, Dental Journal. And she has also received the best consulting dental surgeon in Pune, uh, you know, at the uh, uh, Women Leadership Award held in Delhi on 8 March 2020 on the occasion of Women's Day. So she has received the Sports Dentistry Speaker of the Year 2021 at uh, Gomha uh, Dental Award. She has also received the Rising Star uh, Award 2021 as a Sports Dentist from IER City Global. In January 2020, just uh, recently, she has become the yes. clinical director for a special Olympic Bharat special smile program for Pune, Maharashtra for the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav healthy athlete program, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be held on 7 April. It's three days. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Dr. Sneha, <laughs> so we can start a long list, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice that uh, you know she is a she is a life member of our society, Indian Society of Sports and Exercise Medicine. So the stage is yours. Please start. Yes, sure. Uh, yes. So I think do you need to make uh, me the presenter again or no? Oh, no. Yeah. You can directly do. Just a minute. I'll just now. I'll share it full screen. Okay. Uh -huh. Please, please do. Please. Okay, just uh, give me a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can see. Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see. Uh, now let me just check whether the slides are moving. Okay, please do it. 
no problem yeah fine okay, you can huh, see the yeah. slides that are moving right yeah fine. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. fine from my side yeah <laughs> okay okay fine okay just a minute yeah i'll start just give me a second i'll just shift the window up so that i can see what i'm talking yeah so a very good afternoon uh, everyone uh, i hope uh, everyone is awake on sunday afternoon uh, to listen to a very different topic uh, than what your usual topic in sports uh, medicine are so yes today uh, i really thank iccm to for giving me this chance to speak on uh, sports dentistry uh, which is indeed an upcoming and important aspect of sports medicine which i'm sure uh, you will eventually discover that there is a lot to it uh, so i'll just uh, Go ahead. Just a minute. So, uh, yes, first question that I usually ask everyone is, uh, have you heard of sports industry? Because, you know, a lot of people that I come across, uh, they have not heard of sports industry. And uh, doctor, just in case, if there is a lag, you just tell me. Huh? Because I will just go on talking. I'll not realize that if there is any lag is there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, see, basically, this is an old field of dentistry. And uh, I even I was very surprised that in countries like the US, UK, and Australia, sports dentistry has been around for, uh, you know, more than three decades. So, it is quite surprising that how late uh, uh, it has come to India. So, the most important thing that we need to do here is to, uh, you know, increase awareness regarding it. So, yes, awareness to the dentists, awareness to the athletes, coaches, and awareness uh, about it to the sports healthcare professionals, to the sports administration is, you know, what I have been trying to do since last three years, because these are the three pillars of, uh, you know, uh, who will understand what sports industry is. So, just a glimpse of, uh, you know, what are we going to learn today? Uh, the prevalence of dentofacial injuries in sports and their impact, introduction of sports dentistry and its components, an overview of mouth guards, which I am sure a lot of you are curious to know about, then a detailed discussion of, uh, you know, what is exactly I, by what do you mean by a sports dentist in the first place or you know what what is the role of a sports dentist in the sports medicine team per se or uh, whatever the athlete healthcare team is there so what is the role uh, then of course we talk a little about preventive programs in sports dentistry uh, what is the career and practice in sports dentistry we do some case discussions and uh, in the end uh, what are the advances in sports dentistry the road ahead so basically, why is it important? Because uh, there are a lot of studies have been done uh, in uh, many countries, US, UK, everywhere, regarding uh, dentofacial injuries in sports in particular. And they have come to various uh, consensus or various conclusions. So they are that 50% of kids participating in sports could experience a dental injury by graduation. Uh, 3 million, 5 million, these are the amount of teeth, you know, that are lost at sporting events annually. And this is not just some random figure. There are some studies that have been done uh, by uh, American Dental Association and uh, such, you know, big associations. And the most important thing is the most common type of oral and facial injury sustained during participation in sports is the dental injury. And majority of these dental injuries are preventable with the use of a mouth guard. Yeah, so let us discuss. As I said, 3 to 3 million, 5 million, these are the teeth that are lost each year in sports. An athlete has a 33% chance of sustaining a dental injury in sports. 80% of these tooth injuries are to the maxillary central incisors, which are the two front teeth. Now, we know that dental injuries are most common, but they are most common in which sports? They are the contact sports. 
Now we all know that you know contact sports are the sports in which you know the players they physically kind of interact with each other. They prevent each other, the opposing team or the person from winning. So which are the top uh, Indian sports where mouth guards are are a must or you know where there are a lot of endofacial injuries? Uh, these are football, hockey, cricket, boxing, kabaddi, soccer, cycling, gymnastics, basketball, mixed martial arts, volleyball, skating. So there is a, a wide variety of sports. where dental and uh, facial and soft tissue injuries occur and where mouth guards are a must so what is the impact of these uh, dental facial injuries uh, see we as doctors you know we know that uh, any injury is going to have a physical impact you know because of uh, facial injuries the teeth might get evolved so the teeth might break uh, there may be jaw fracture so these are all the there is facial deformity uh, swelling so all these are the physical impact of these dental facial injuries but you know behind that there is so much of psychosocial impact uh, especially uh, you know concerning the facial aspect because for the athlete the confidence everything uh, relies you know it's he is he or she they are a public figure okay so their face is their confidence their teeth are their their smile is their confidence okay so if they have a huge amount of facial injury especially facial uh, not just dental so what happens is the athlete can go into depression anxiety hostility that is loss of self confidence reduced self esteem and sometimes what happens is the athlete may not have a full blown depression it might be just sub threshold so many times there are you know there is not enough intervention that is done are nahi ye theek ho jayega this is what we usually tend to say but uh, that's uh, should not be the case you know even if they are not meeting the diagnostic criteria intervention should happen and a proper rehabilitation of the athlete in these cases should happen and what is the economic considerations of these dental facial injuries the recovery process is lengthy multiple surgeries are required uh, you know especially if uh, 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 dental surgeries uh, jaw bone surgeries plastic surgeries there is a huge list of surgeries that might be required depending on the severity and thousands to lakhs of rupees have to be spent and along with this there is a definite social stigma and still less acceptance for facial disfigurement let's face it even if even when one tooth is lost or one tooth is broken the smile gets affected everything of the athlete gets affected so this is definitely going to cause a burden on the athletes and the parents economically and emotionally psychologically as well so we as dentists and you all as uh, the sports healthcare professionals uh, it is our duty to tell to the athlete to the coach explain it to the coaches that the protective equipment like mouth guard is definitely cheaper than any kind of rehabilitation that the later the athlete is going to require so this particular slide i always put in all my presentations which i give to the athlete that why does my child see because younger athletes we have to you know tell the parents we have to change their mindset the parents and the coaches are the ones whose mindset we need to change so this is what i have uh, what is very simply they have explained why does my child need a custom mouth guard for injury prevention to form good habits and to lower dental costs and usually what we uh, 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 in our homes what we usually do is we try to inculcate some habits into the children why do we do that because we believe that they if we inculcate them at young age the those habits will get carry forward when they grow up so the, the this is exactly the same which is going to happen with these athletes if they get used to wearing mouth guards when they are very young there is very high chance that they will still continue using the mouth guard when in their professional careers as well so basically the most important take home of dentofacial injury is that it is different from other dental trauma as it is easily to prevent it and there is also a possibility to dramatically reduce the occurrence level by the use of mouth guards now this is a, a typical photo of a dentofacial injury which could easily have been prevented with the use of a mouth guard and of course the custom fabricated mouth guard which is the best defense against sports related dental injury so am i the only person who is uh, you know talking about these mouth guards 
there are different world dental associations you know all over the world who are recommending the use of mouth guards now for example the american dental association they have been continued to promote the use of mouth guards as early as the 1940s and today they recommend mouth guards to be used in 29 sports so that is a huge that is a big number so in india uh, even if not say 29 but yes there are definitely i would say 12 to 15 sports are there surely which definitely do need a mouth guard similarly the australian dental association has also identified 20 sports played by aussie kids uh, in which mouth guards should be worn you know they have this kind of a logo like when when it's game on it's mouth guard in so, you know, we have to come up with such uh, logos, some slogans like these for our athletes and encourage them uh, for mouth guard use. See, sports in our country, you know, you all must have also witnessed uh, this change in last 20 years that, you know, overall sports and more so contact sports are on a rapid rise in the 21st century so for these along with the general uh, you know overall health uh, checkups of the athletes and interventions they need dental care and trauma prevention to give them a competitive edge you know we are talking about sending athletes to olympics and national and international games so a very simple thing like a dental checkup is a must it hardly takes a uh, time hardly it takes 10 15 minutes to do the dental checkup of an athlete okay so the various dental groups and associations in india along with sports bodies at various levels must include sports dental care or sports dentistry not just to improve the oral health but to improve the overall health of the athlete so basically uh, what all does sports dentistry include it is not just about uh, mouth guard, uh, you know, for fabrication or just trauma prevention. No, it is not. Yes, of course, that does form the major part of it, no doubt. But there are many other aspects to it. There is oral care of the athlete, diet modification of the athlete according to what kind of food he or she is having, substance or tobacco abuse counseling, uh, customized mouth guards, injury prevention programs, and of course, finally, in the end, emergency and long term management of the ventofacial injuries. So, we are going to speak a little bit in detail about what are these, uh, you know, to, uh, again, for simplicity, I have divided into main components and additional components. So the main components, oral care, mouth guard formation, modification in the diet, and dentofacial injury management. So we are going to talk about each one slide by slide. And additional components are referral to the proper medical personnel, recognition of doping, recognition of tobacco or substance abuse, health assessment of athletes, special need athletes, recognition of eating disorders. So let's talk about this a little bit one by one. So oral care of athlete, basically whenever the athlete, when, when is the best time to do this? Whenever the athlete goes for a pre-season physical examination, that is the correct time to go for a dental examination as well. What will happen in that? There will be a detailed history will be taken and injury risk assessment has to be done at that stage. What type of, what is the age of the athlete? What type of game the athlete is playing? What sport, is it a high contact sport? What is the age? What is the condition of the uh, teeth? Uh, is the athlete undergoing orthodontic treatment? Are the upper teeth proclined in the front? So there are so many factors that the dentist can find out and uh, dental checkups dental treatments and uh, mouth guards now about mouth guards the uh, dentist has to explain the type of mouth guards and the importance to the athletes and the coaches uh, the, they have to recommend a mouth guard according to the athlete's age dental issues and the sport plate and after fabricating the mouth guard they have to give the uh, instructions for mouth guard care as well now nutrition assessment and counseling now we all know that you know a high carbohydrate diet is a must for optimum performance of the athlete i mean that is a given you cannot you cannot separate athlete and carb diet that is not possible but you know at the same time it has to be really carefully chosen to reduce the risk of dental decay or erosion so that is why uh, you know as the sports dentist uh, their main role is to understand the dietary habits along with the oral hygiene habits of the athlete the dentist has to instruct the athlete regarding the usage of certain foods 
commonly seen in sports setups like sports drinks, carbonated beverages, use of chewing gums, and uh, you know encouraging them to consume more complex carbohydrates rather than simple carbohydrates, uh, not just for better oral health but for better general health as well. So this is a big topic. It's a separate topic in itself. Yes, and uh, about endofacial injury prevention and management. The prevention part we will discuss a bit later. The right now we will just talk about the management part. Uh, in the management part, there are again two things: emergency management and long-term management. Now, for the emergency management, the dentist has to educate the coach, the team physician, the other dentists, and everyone. They all should be on the same uh, level of knowledge regarding that, and they have to be competent and in the initial assessment and management techniques with the help of uh, first aid. And of course, uh, in any kind of injury, first we have to rule out, you know, whether there are any other. Uh, if all the body parameters are normal. If the athlete is conscious, only then that uh, you have to go for the dentofacial injury evaluation. And in case if the dentist is not available on the field, then the athlete has to be taken immediately to the dental clinic. <clears throat> now, the sports dentist, they uh, you, you know usually they have to have a thorough understanding of all principles of dental trauma management. So the long-term management of dentofacial injuries, uh, you, it mainly includes, uh, you know, all the specialties of dentistry like oral surgery, endodontics, operative dentistry, orthodontics, hospital dentistry, and patient behavior management. So suppose I am I am a dentist. Uh, so I may not be an oral surgeon or I may not be an pediatric dentist. But if I am the team dentist, it is my role to coordinate with the rest of the uh, dental specialists and the medical specialists. So it is my responsibility that I coordinate uh, the entire dental treatment of that athlete. Along with these roles, what are the additional roles? Now, referral. Why? Why does the patient need a referral? Uh, suppose uh, during an injury, uh, uh, in the hurry, scurry, uh, the dental injury is seen, but many times you are not able to uh, make out whether the, the patient is concussed or no. But suppose at that point, if the patient is going to the dentist, there are some signs and symptoms that the dentist should look out. Like for example, to detect early symptoms of mild brain injury, like if you know there is headache or feeling of pressure in the head, or if the athlete is appearing dazed or stunned or can't recall events or nausea or vomiting. So, if there are any such kind of symptoms, then recognition and referral guidelines to the proper medical personnel for non-related dental injury, which may occur during a dentofacial injury. These include cerebral concussion, head and neck injury. So, a dentist has to know about all these things as well. Recognition of doping. Now, you all know that doping is basically use of uh, performance enhancing drugs and, you know, all sports organizations ban uh, doping. So, but then what is the role of the dentist in this? See, uh, many times what happens is um, the patient is undergoing some dental treatment, say, and the dentist is prescribing some medications uh, to the athlete. So, in this case, the dentist has to familiar, be familiar with all kinds of drugs that are under the banned list as well because generally what happens is if there is a huge swelling or uh, there is a lot of inflammation third molar swelling uh, the dentist might tend to give steroids and uh, they are banned so there are some few drugs which the, there is a high chance that the dentist might prescribe to the patient and which are under the banned list so the dentist needs to know this while prescri uh, while uh, doing any prescription to the patient and also the dentist needs to recognize if, if there is something uh, you know something is wrong with the patient if he is not being himself if he is on any drugs or you know some kind of issue because see uh, even uh, similarly with the next slide is the recognition of tobacco substance abuse so what happens is uh, mainly the thing, uh, interesting thing here is that the patient is not going to go to the physician or uh, saying that, you know, I am oh, I'm, I'm into drugs or I am doing this. But what if the patient will, why will the patient go to the dentist? Because he is having stains in his mouth because of the tobacco habit or uh, because of the drug habit or uh, if the athlete is under a lot of stress, there is a lot of teeth erosion. So the patient is going to the dentist, going to go to the dentist with a completely different complaint that I am feeling a lot of uh, sensitivity in the teeth or I am having a lot of stains in the teeth. So, it is at this point 
that you know the dentist should if the dentist knows that okay i have to look for this i have to look uh, whether the athlete is having any you know smoking habit or smokeless tobacco or if the athlete is taking some drugs uh, from the behavior of the athlete the dentist should suspect something and then it is the duty of the dentist to you know uh, coordinate with the sports physician and the coaches that inform them that you know something is def definitely some eating habits some drug habits some eating disorders there is some issue with this athlete that is what you can easily come to know when the patient is coming to the dentist for some different uh, issue the most common issue is stains and uh, you know sensitivity in the teeth and of course health assessment because the dentist has to look into this matter as well because in last uh, two decades uh, research has you know very clearly proven that dental poor dental care is definitely going to affect the athlete's overall health so the dentist has to make sure that health problems don't arise due to dental issues in the athletes. Uh, you know, uh, regarding these uh, health issues, I myself have seen, forget about athletes, I'm just talking also about regular patients. I have seen patients in my clinic where I see a lot of decay or a lot of gum problems in their mouth. I tell them to do a, a blood test, blood sugar level test for uh, diabetes and many a times my intuition is correct that they have not done a uh, test till now and uh, when i see uh, when i look at their teeth i feel something is wrong the reason for them their teeth getting so much decay there is more reason not just improper oral hygiene there is more to it and many a times that intuition has been right and they have been detected of diabetes and uh, they both the things are affecting each other bad oral health is also uh, leading to diabetes and if a person is having undetected diabetes that will also worsen the oral health so you know both the things not just diabetes there are so many other cardiovascular problems so many things are there which are quite interrelated to each other so the dentist uh, has to make sure that you know all these problems are not happening because of the dental issues in the athlete's mouth now, of course, there is a large section, the regular athletes, along with the regular athletes, there is a large section in our society who are uh, like special need athletes or para-athletes. There are a lot of behavioral issues in, the, in them, developmental disorders, cognitive disorders, and systemic diseases. So all these things increase, increase that child or that adult's uh, risk for developing oral diseases. So this is a very huge section in our society. And uh, I, I am really happy uh, to share that, you know, Special Olympics Bharat has been uh, 20 to 22 years. They are active in our country. And uh, now uh, the, there is a big event called Azadika Amrut um, Mahotsav on World Health Day. We are going to do a checkup camp of around, uh, you know, the target is 75,000 athletes and uh, 77,500 doctors and dentists are going to do their medical and dental checkups of these athletes. So it is going to be a very huge event and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So because see at these, at these uh, camps, uh, the checkup is just to start once you do the checkup, then if there are any uh, health issues or dental issues of the athlete, then you have to call into the clinics or any or institutions or dental colleges where you know they will uh, get uh, uh, dental treatments are done for them. So this this mass uh, scale event is it is necessary to you know percolate to all the various cities of the country. Okay, so this event is going to happen in about uh, more than seventy five cities uh, in our country on the same date. On one day, on 7th April, 75,000 athletes are going to be checked. So it's going to be an amazing uh, thing. So yes, and in the end, uh, recognition of eating disorders. Now, it is not uncommon for dentists to recognize the symptoms of anorexia and bulimia through dental examination. Women's gymnastics, volleyball and basketball are just a few sports where eating disorders have been documented. Erosion patterns in the teeth caused by gastric acids often help the dentist in the differential diagnosis of these eating disorders. So as I said earlier, the patient is not going to go to the physician saying that, you know, I have developed this eating disorder. The patient is going to go to the dentist for some other uh, issue. And then the dentist has to recognize that this is 
something uh, more serious then the dentists have to dig in a little bit more take the diet history take the overall what is the daily habit of the athlete and then uh, refer the patient to the physician so it's an uh, intervention it's like two to three uh, specialists have to come together because eating disorders is a complex phenomenon i'm sure some of you uh, definitely know more much more detail about it than i do but one thing is for sure that you know medical psychological dental and nutritional interventions are definitely required for the eating disorders and uh, you know it's it's a duty for all of us to work together uh, to you know eradicate this problem uh, for the athlete so uh, so these were all the roles of that a sports dentist is going to play in the athlete team now let us talk about uh, what is what is a mouth guard okay so a mouth guard is a protective device for the mouth that covers the teeth and the gums to prevent and reduce injury to the teeth the arches the lips and the gums now again there are uh, one or two types of mouth guards like uh, for uh, as shown here there is a specific sports mouth guard then there are other dental night guards like for example again also the you know uh, uh, athletes because uh, due to the stress that they uh, experience uh, with the anxiety uh, before the any tournament uh, they there is a lot of uh, grinding of the teeth bruxism is what we call so because of that there is a lot of sensitivity in their teeth so at this point uh, they can have the jaw pain purely because of the teeth grinding teeth clenching they have eroded teeth so at this juncture what needs to be given is along with the mouth guard during the while they are playing a dental night guard also has to be given so as to reduce the effect of this uh, teeth clenching and of course the psychological aspect of that has to also be taken care of so what are the various types of mouth guards over the counter or stock mouth guards uh, these are you know typically very basic mouth guards hardly 200 to 250 rupees you get over the counter they are rubber or polyvinyl and uh, you know sold in small medium or large sizes basically we don't uh, talk about these because you know they are absolutely of no use to the athlete patient the main two mouth guards that we uh, focus on are the boil and bite mouth guards which are boiled in water and formed to the teeth and custom made mouth guards from a full mouth impression so how do these mouth guards protect see basically the mouth guard is designed from a material uh, thermoplastic material which you can say like eva ethyl vinyl acetate so the mouth guard is uh, not like a tough material uh, like an acrylic it is more flexible material so what it does is it is designed to absorb and distribute the forces of impact while while the athlete is participating so whenever there is a huge impact suppose a hockey stick is hitting the face so what will happen is the mouth guard will absorb that entire force and distribute the force not just to these front two teeth but the force will get distributed to all the rest of the teeth till the first molar and the teeth which are behind they have much more stronger roots okay so once the force gets distributed the injury or the fracture that was going to happen to these front teeth that uh, that does not happen so because of this any under chin over here any kind of impact or lacerations to the lips cheeks anything is going to happen any properly fitted mouth guard will reduce the force upon impact and protect the jaws from the fracture protect the jaw joint here uh, help prevent the laceration of the lips cheeks gums and the tongue by covering the sharp surfaces you know what what uh, we have seen injuries happening these upper teeth this is what happens you know these upper teeth they are getting inserted on the lower lip and uh, many a times a small piece of that tooth is seen embedded in the lower lip so but when the athlete is play uh, using a mouth guard while playing that issue will also not happen and it will prevent any kind of laceration now you will see in this slide if you see carefully everywhere they are mentioning a properly fitted mouth guard so i i'll talk about this that you know what is exactly that but before that let's discuss let's compare uh, you know uh, uh, the various mouth guards that are there so stock mouth guard as i said earlier it has no individual fitting and is least desirable and it is available at local sports stores but is basically of uh, you know no use at all 
Now the boil and bite variety, I must say it is uh, extremely popular among the athletes and the coaches and individual fitting is attempted by boiling the material and adapting to the teeth. Now what happens here, it is also available at local sports stores, but why it is not that effective? Because see, you are you are going to apply it first manually okay so there is uneven distribution of the material which does not allow for proper fit and protection so that is why custom made mouth guards are the most preferred uh, they are uh, fabricated under the proper guidance of a dentist uh, they are either made in the dental clinic or sent by the dentist to the dental lab for custom fabrication with proper guidelines now uh, again i would like to tell here that the athlete will try to argue with you if you try to convince them for a mouth guard saying that you know are wo barabar nahi baithta hai main usse baat nahi kar pata they will give up. but this is exactly what is the advantage of the custom made mouth guard is its fit okay it is going to fit really well uh, adaptability to individual speech requirements is going to be very good customized occlusion by which i mean the the bite of the patient the bite of the athlete patient it is going to be exactly customized to that particular patient and that is why there is no the most important thing that you need to tell to your athlete is that don't just go and make a mouth guard before the moment that is not going to help the athlete has to use the mouth guard during practice games as, as well get used to uh, 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 wearing it while playing while speaking uh, and uh, you know while breathing so all these things they have to get adjusted properly only then the athlete is going to be comfortable while wearing it on to for some bigger tournament or event so as i was saying because see because today what ha is happening is uh, mouth guard itself has become a, a, a million dollar industry or something like uh, in the sports you can say uh, especially in the foreign markets uh, so you know every person is using the word mouth guard and uh, claiming that it is going to give protection to the teeth so there is an academy of sports dentistry in the us which was established in 1983 so recently uh, they have come up with the word properly fitted mouth guard uh, wherein they are saying that for optimal safety and well being of athletes competing in the 21st century the academy of sports dentistry has adopted the position that the single word mouth guard must be replaced by the term a properly fitted custom mouth guard because only that is going to give the protection that that we as dentists we are claiming the protection that it will give okay so just not just any mouth guard is going to give that kind of protection so what are the properties so you i i as a sports dentist i want you as uh, the sports physicians the nutritionists physiotherapists i want you to understand this that what is a properly fitted mouth guard and you have to uh, you know uh, uh, how do you say uh, motivate the coaches motivate the athletes that go for this this is a better uh, thing like it has to have an adequate thickness in all areas to provide the reduction of impact forces it has to be retentive it cannot dislodge speed concentrations have to be good and it has to be wearable wearable duration of time at least for one season of play and why is the fit important to avoid sudden dislodgement of the mouth guard by a blow to maximize the cushioning effect to maximize the protection for the athlete's teeth okay so this is why we are focusing now on a properly fitted mouth guard now what are the steps and dental visits uh, in a simple line the first visit the dentist uh, the athlete goes to the dentist the dentist will take a detailed sports history dental history medical history uh, diet history the athlete the dentist will decide what type of mouth guard the uh, athlete needs the dentist will take an impression it will go to the lab where the mouth guard is fabricated then again from the lab the uh, mouth guard will uh, come to the clinic and the mouth guard will be given to the athlete along with the care of instructions as to how to use it and also the dentist will tell the athlete uh, that you know whenever next visit uh, like suppose 2 months 3 months down the line if the patient is going to visit the dentist then you have to bring the mouth guard with you okay and another important uh, thing from injury point of view which i want to tell that uh, if the athlete is wearing the mouth guard and if the athlete falls on the face or gets hurt on the face uh, then and if the mouth guard gets the blow of that entire impact then that is the time to change the mouth guard because the next time the mouth guard will not be able to protect the athlete in the same manner 
so the athlete can use the custom fabricated mouth guard for one or two seasons if if there is no direct blow to that mouth guard how to fit a boil and bite mouth guard there are so many types of affordable and high quality uh, mouth guards are available that are available in the market so the mouth guard has to be boiled in a pot of hot water and it has to be formed to the teeth as uh, as how it is shown here so what we can usually do is uh, during uh, whenever the uh, athletes are having their practice games the dentist can go and meet them they can understand what are their requirements uh, who needs a custom fabricated who cannot afford a custom fabricated who can go for a good quality boil and bite mouth guard should be enough so all these things that dentist can meet the team and decide and uh, show it to them what type of uh, how to make a boil and bite mouth guard what is the custom fabricated mouth guard so that is how it happens so uh, for the dentist to interact with the sports medicine team for various dental issues let us see one by one what are the things which the dentist needs to uh, you know it is essential for the team dentist to coordinate with various members of the sports medicine or the athlete team for resolving dental and the related issues of the athlete now along with the sports medicine physician the dentist has to coordinate uh, for various health issues you know uh, those issues those health issues which are more related to the dental problems like sleep because there is a uh, there is a lot of stuff going on dental sleep medicine and uh, fabrication of mandibular uh, uh, devices which will you know help the patient sleep better for uh, cardiovascular and diabetic problems if the athlete is having any nutritional Uh, deficiencies you know which are which are having any obvious oral symptoms uh, then if uh, any performance related issues i will be talking about uh, performance later and of course uh, any kind of injuries that the athlete is facing then with the coaches it is important for the dentist to be in touch with the coaches the physicians the uh, certified athletic trainers for resolving the dental issues of the athletes and they have to stress for preventive treatment that is very very important with the sports nutritionist the dentist has to discuss in cases of severe dental caries and dental erosions they have to with a team together they have to uh, give proper guidance on what type of sports drinks the athlete should be consuming then with the sports psychologist the dentist has uh, can discuss in cases of bruxism severe stress eating disorders and uh, dental erosions also even in cases of suspected drug abuse and uh, tobacco withdrawal symptoms and uh, ptsd for dentofacial injuries so uh, as i said you know if if i start talking about how to interact with each and every uh, sports medicine team person that is uh, again a separate presentation so that will again take one or two hours if i start talking as to how and what things uh, the dentist has to uh, you know be coordination with for each and every team member uh now uh, with the sports physiotherapist open mouth breathing uh, causes uh, exaggerated teeth erosion uh, dental uh, decay because of hyposalivation so but we open mouth breathing is such a common thing you might have come across so and in uh, athletes or who are uh, competitive athletes or who are or who are just you know playing uh, for the sake of having fun also even they are having lot of open mouth breathing issues so because of this their oral health is getting affected so this is what we call buccal respiration okay uh, open mouth breathing so the dentist needs to discuss in case of buccal respiration now if the athlete is having some history of frequent falls for so that also the dentist needs to discuss uh, because there are chances that you know many times a dent patient is going to fall on the mouth and uh, there is a very interesting thing about achilles tendinosis uh, because uh, in sports dentistry literature uh, this one uh, clear association has been made that if the patient is having uh, a recurrent uh, inflammation in the achilles tendon then it is and it's not healing it is recurring again and again then it is high time that you have to ask check for any kind of oral infection in the patient's mouth now it is you know we will feel that what is the relation of oral infection and achilles tendinosis but believe me any kind of oral infection is chronic you know because patients tend to neglect uh, and overlook their oral infections so any kind of oral infections will uh, pass through the lymphatic system 
and this kind of lymphatic drainage will go and sit in the Achilles tendon and it has studies have been shown that you know uh, any oral chronic oral infection is can uh, lead to recurrent Achilles tendinosis. Uh, then other specialists like for example see pediatricians they usually uh, do the fitness evaluation of these young athletes they do the uh, uh, treat the trauma injuries of these young athletes so the dentist needs to discuss cases of dental trauma in young athletes motivate them for mouth guard use and any other suspected illnesses especially in younger special need athletes as well uh, these interactions are very important so this is just a summary if anyone wants to take a picture of this, a summary of liaison of the team dentist with all health professionals in the team. So sports dentistry practices mainly in two ways. You know, it, it just, uh, I'm sure you all uh, as sports medicine physicians, you also know that one part of your practice lies in the clinic and one part of the practice is on the field. You know, uh, it's not possible to, uh, like you, you just cannot have any one thing at one time so in the clinic mostly what happens is dental treatments for individual athletes education of single or small groups of athletes pre-season screenings usually they are rarely they happen in the clinic mostly they happen on the field uh, mouth guard fabrications individual dental treatments and uh, the dentist for the athlete for the coaches for the team all these treatments individual treatments happen in the clinic so what happens on the field? So mostly uh, for the entire team of athletes, when the dentist goes on the on the field, that is usually when you call it as, as a team dentist. Is what just like a team physician, the dent a dentist is referred like a sports dentist or a team dentist. Uh, here you uh, the dentist has to educate the sports medicine team, the athletes and the parents regarding the dental care issues of the athlete. The pre-season screenings happen at these athlete camps. Team mouth guard programs delivery of team dental care and the team dentist for various uh, college uh, various levels of athlete so let's focus on the on the field what all things that the dentist has to do again education as i said you know education of the sports medicine team uh, the, this is such a big topic that again this uh, lecture right now is not going to be sufficient because there is a host of topics that the dentist needs to educate the entire sports medicine team on this we can keep like a, again a separate topic in itself this is today's lecture is mainly an overall introduction about what exactly sports dentistry is and what it means uh, for the sports medicine team. The only main thing that the sports medicine uh, people or the sports healthcare professionals they have to remember is that poor health is definitely going to negatively affect the training and the performance of the athlete by inducing the pain, induce, uh, reducing the well-being and the quality of the life, increasing systemic inflammation. So it is important to embed oral health within other aspects of the health promotion and regular assessments by a dental professional are extremely essential. So uh, pre-season dental screenings, as I said, dental literature contains information from surveys that are done at various uh, championship events. You know, uh, recently in 2012 in London Olympics, a big study, a big survey was done on the dental care and the dental uh, uh, treatments of the athletes. So, uh, what was the conclusion of that survey? 40% of these athletes were bothered by the dental health. 20% of the athletes felt it impacted their training and performance. 30% of the athletes reported a loss of quality of life. So, these are big numbers. And there is a huge lot of dental treatments that were required uh, at these various uh, uh, big uh, Olympic programs. So, now what... That is why it is very important to do a pre-season dental examination. So as I said earlier, when it is done at the pre-season, pre PPEs as what we call pre-participation, physical evaluation, at this time, the pre-season dental examination is done. What exactly is done at this pre-season dental examination? Uh, a short medical history, dental history, x-rays, uh, comprehensive dental screening, soft tissue examination and mouth guard evaluation which if the athlete is already having a mouth guard then examine the existing mouth guard and uh, otherwise impression for new mouth guards are done. What will the dentist look for in the athlete's mouth? If there are any broken or missing or decayed teeth, if there is gum inflammation or you know gum disease, periodontal conditions are there, if there are erosion patterns on the teeth are seen, if there are any soft tissue anomalies, 
if there are impacted third molars and pericoronitis, by pericoronitis we mean uh, the, the gum it tissue all over the third molar is completely inflamed and the athlete is re having really a horrible time uh, because of the pain and the swelling and this drastically because you know younger athletes, uh, you know those athletes uh, in the age group of 18 to 30 who are having recently they have that uh, the jaws development is just recently got over there is very high chance that they might getting uh, might be having uh, you know erupting third molars in their mouth so uh, uh, these if they have one or two episodes of these uh, third molar pain and swelling it is advisable to just simply remove these teeth because they are going to cause a hindrance for them during their training sessions and of course if there are any pathologies of the head, face, neck that are seen. Then what will uh, the uh, dentist discuss with the athletes? Importance of oral health, wearing a mouth guard, pitfalls of sports drinks, health hazards of smokeless tobacco, teaching oral hygiene techniques and motivation for preventive treatment. Now team mouth guard programs. Uh, the now this is again very interesting uh, this is very frequently done in uh, all countries in the US UK so uh, just uh, one minute what they usually do is uh, they provide mouth guards for the entire team uh, yes definitely this can be a challenge but it is being done in many countries uh, especially in the US so what can what is done is uh, there is a team is there for this mouth mass mouth guard impression event a team is assembled to ensure that the whole process moves smoothly minimum three teams have to be present like the registration team to fill out form with the identification number the dentist team to take the impressions the dental assistant team to make alginate and pore impressions and you know giving the correct labels because there are there are going to be a, hu a huge number of athletes on the on the field okay and if required the dentist will also involve the dental lab as a four team so these team mouth guard programs, you know, it is, uh, I really feel that uh, all these things, uh, you know, they should happen in our country as well, you know, because it will encourage, see, instead of going the, for the, then each and every athlete going to the dental clinic for getting their mouth guard, if the dentist can come to the events, to the practice sessions and take uh, uh, impressions of all the athletes and then again come to deliver uh, definitely a lot of athletes will get encouraged to use uh, the custom fabricated mouth guards team dental care now the responsibility of the team dentist for routine dental care increases uh, as the level of the competition arises for example now at the high school level the dentist can cater to athletes who are patients of record in the practice Many athletes might be consulting their family dentists for dental treatments. Dental checkups at this level is a good practice builder for the sports dentist uh, and the dentist can conduct dental care of the entire team. But as the level increases, you know, at the college level, the many athletes are further from home and will rely more on the team dentist for routine care. Now, again, above this, the professional level. The team dentist has to take care not only of the team members but also the coaching staff, other sports professionals, team personals, other administrative staff. So the responsibility and the role of the dentist increases as the level goes higher up. So uh, this is what we have seen. What are the various roles of the dentist now? Uh, what exactly should we uh, you know, do for preventing dentofacial injuries? What are the suggestions for reducing and preventing sports related dentofacial injuries? The most important is increasing the number of dental professionals to play active role in sports injury prevention programs. So the dentist has to be educated. The dentist has to be sensitized and that is why conducting courses on sports dentistry is very important because once the dentists are trained and the dentists know the importance, then the, they will uh, educate uh, the athletes and the coaches and finally, the oral health of those athletes will improve and the dentofacial injury rate will drop, which is, you know, what we want to finally achieve that, you know, the dentofacial injury uh, needs rate needs to drop. Uh, yes, now another very important thing, correct coaching and training. Believe it or not, I have been to various camps and one thing which I have uh, very clearly realized is that Athlete is influenced maximum by the coach. That is, uh, that is a given. 
so it is the duty of the coach to encourage mouth guard use in athletes but also see the coach is interacting with the other sports healthcare professionals as well so it is your duty to encourage uh, make the coaches aware and encourage them to force the athletes for the literally i would sometimes say uh, initially a course has to be done the policies have to be made you know inclusion of policies at organizational level like all sports and dental associations they have to make mouth guards mandatory for selected sports and spread the message at various levels through campaigns inclusion of policies at school or college level because younger athletes are the best medium because protection of face and teeth is very critical for them and uh, yes uh, mouth guards also custom fabricated mouth guards are preferable uh, and the coaches they have to be strict for the following of rules and code of conduct for these young athletes only then you know slowly things will change and improve sports injury surveys and research a lot of uh, uh injury dental injury uh, research surveys data collection has to be done the dentists have to analyze and evaluate these injury rates and help form policies regarding mouth guard use you know all these things are very important uh, in the long run to eventually uh, reduce the injury rate and of course sports equipment facilities and infrastructure see the manufacturers they keep improving now mouth guards if you go on the internet uh you will see hundreds and thousands of mouth guards that, that are available today and various kinds of designs are also there so you have to be updated you have to know you have to ask the dentist that you know which uh, type of boil and bout mouth guard see because sometimes what happens is in our country where economics plays a very important role custom fabricated mouth guard the athlete may not prefer because of economic reasons so you must be experiencing this in your practices as well that you have to tell them the best option but if they are not ready for it you have to tell them the next best option so the next best option is a boil and bite mouth guard so you uh, have to know about those mouth guards and you have to tell the dentist to uh, you know keep them updated about all these things and which type of mouth guard will be suitable for them and uh, the sports dentistry clinics have to uh, you know collaborate with the sports rehabilitation centers this is how finally the athletes will get exposed to regular dental care so uh, you can inform your dentist friends uh, because dentists of all specialties uh, they can become a sports dentist including the general dentist as you know all types of dental treatments are needed for these athletes you know so whether it is a periodontist an orthodontist an oral surgeon endodontist whoever it be anyone can become your a sports dentist a lot of people ask me what are the job opportunities as a sports dentist now uh, sadly enough right now the situation in our country is that uh, like just like a sports say a sports physician <laughs> or a nutritionist there are no job openings as such exactly but yes the dental organize uh, except i if, if you might say at the in the national and the international levels except those uh, there are no direct job opportunities as such right now so then the, the dental associations and organizations should request the sports authorities to introduce the position of the team dentist at all levels and for individual and team sports in india in the meantime usually like what even i am doing is uh, you know con- be, uh, being as a consultant as a consultant sports dentist or a team dentist to various sports clubs academies schools colleges i've been i've been visiting uh, various places uh, these kind of places and uh, you know giving them uh, lectures excuse me uh, giving them awareness lectures regarding uh, mouth guards oral care so this is how the dentist is going to build up slowly and eventually because india needs team dentist at all levels you know whether it is local city level district level state level national and international of course uh, the dentist can form sports dentistry center and as i said earlier the sports dentistry center has to collaborate with the sports rehabilitation center or uh, suppose with a sports nutritionist or any sports healthcare professional they have to form a team um the dentist has to form a team and uh, the dentist has to have all the basic emergency equipment in the clinic and prepare an exclusive sports dental first aid kit this is what i usually teach in my workshops you know that uh, what is the uh, exclusive first aid dental kit 
that the dentist uh, should be having. I teach them uh, to the athletes and the coaches as well as I said uh, that you know this is a separate topic. So all these things are included in that lecture. The dentist can conduct dental care and dentofacial injury awareness programs in the various schools, colleges, and sports club. Uh, so uh, let us just see few interesting cases. I won't you know, uh, go too much in detail about this. I just want to just show that how simple uh, cosmetic dental treatments can uh, make a lot of difference. Uh, for the athlete's smile and the athlete's confidence. Uh, this is a uh, type 2. By type 2 fracture, we mean the enamel and the dentine is also lost while the tooth is fractured. Now, in this after image, it is not very ideally done. But what happened was it when I did the ideal, gave it the ideal shape, the whole thing got fractured once because the lower tooth was hitting it again and again. So, we did a treatment which is less than ideal, but it stayed and the patient was happy. So, you know, various, uh, now even in this case, there are a lot of spacing between the teeth that you see. So, I told the dent athlete clearly that when we built up this tooth, I am also going to uh, continue to keep the spacing between the front two teeth. Otherwise, it is going to look funny. So, the football athlete, he was a 21-year-old football athlete, he agreed to it and he's very happy with the result. Now, this athlete, see, I'll tell you how young uh, uh, girls and boys, how much they are conscious. He was a 14-year-old athlete doing skating. So, we know that skating is not a contact sport, but skating definitely will require a light mouth guard because 90% uh, of the times when the athlete falls, uh, he, usually, he or she, they usually fall on the face while playing. So, this athlete, he fell on the face and he refused to go to school for two days he did, because I was, they had called me, I was out of town for some reason and when I came back, I called the patient to do the treatment, he, that boy didn't go to school for two days. So that much, they are so much conscious today about how they look and how their teeth are. So, uh, and of course, along with restoring the teeth uh, for dental trauma, along with that motivation for oral care is also equally important. Now, teeth cleaning in this 23-year-old athlete is done. It, uh, the athlete is explained, see, this is an oral care kit. I want all of you to have a look at this carefully. See, this is the kind of oral care kit which contains a brush, a mouthwash, uh, uh, an intra uh, floss, a uh, pain uh, tooth pain relieving gel, an interdental uh, brush. So, this is kind of an oral care kit which the athlete can carry along with the rest of the uh, body bath basic things that the athlete carries uh, along uh, uh, for any tournament that the athlete is going. So, we have to tell them, we have to explain them that this is needed. The athlete has explained what are the various types of mouth guards that are available. So, this is how the motivation uh, the athlete needs uh, has to be done and here again taking impressions for a 13 year old is a boxing athlete where we gave a double layered thermopressed mouth guard uh, then in the next slide demonstrating how to use a high quality boil and bite mouth guard like opro uh, have uh, come in big uh, uh, they are uh, there in india now uh, they have uh, uh, captured a big market here in india and they are selling mouth guards to uh, all types of athletes all over the country so these are good quality high quality boil bite mouth guards which are in the economic range, you know, which, which the patients can afford. So, uh, I recommended this mouth guard to this 14-year-old boy uh, who didn't want a custom fabricated one due to economic reasons. So, sports industry is definitely, uh, you know, one step towards the future. Uh, it is an important part of the sports medicine team. Uh, I love this slide because... Uh, uh, the uh, along with all the other specialists, the dentist also the, the uh, dentist was also mentioned here. So I love to put this slide. And a little bit uh, in the last, I would like to say that where is sports industry heading? Uh, a lot of different things, a lot of things, a lot of interesting uh, things are coming up. Like there are recent innovations in mouth guards, like simple simple innovations like mouth guards with straps attached to helmets, lip guard mouth guards to some complex uh, mouth guards, you know, who are, uh, which are measuring uh, the concussion. If the athlete gets concussed, they do, they do measure that. Like for example, Opro Plus, uh, they measure the change in velocity upon impact, linear accelerometers. They measure the impact of a specific force in a specific direction. Uh, then, of course, there are performance enhancement mouth guards which are coming up. Now, again, this is... Uh, 
big topic, controversial topic. Uh, a lot of studies have been done uh, as to uh, whether uh, really do mouth guards are uh, you know useful in performance enhancement of the athletes. But yes, there are some studies who are concluding that you know if we make the mouth guards in a particular manner. Then what is the help in the performance? It increases the muscular endurance. It will reduce to less lactic acid built up in the muscle, uh, decreased built up of stress hormones, improved reaction. This is again a very big topic, a very complicated topic, but definitely uh, research is going on and more and more better mouth guards are coming up, which will definitely lead to performance enhance enhancement of the athletes. Uh, as I said earlier, sports nutrition assessment and dental care are extremely closely related topics. The interventions have to be planned by the dentist to reduce the damage to the teeth caused by the sports drinks and foods. Now, what are these interventions? The collaboration between the sports dentist and the sports nutritionist is very important. Nutrition or dietary assessment of the athlete, the dentist also needs to do along with the nutritionist and give dietary advice to the athlete, especially in cases of severe decay, erosion, uh, stress, Bruxism, nutritional deficiencies with uh, which are having a lot of oral symptoms and eating disorders. There are a lot of advances uh, coming up today in dental trauma prevention and management. Like there is uh, just like regenerative biomedicine is coming up in the same way. Regenerative endodontics is also coming up, which uses biological approaches, uh, you know, to redevelop the pulpal tissue especially in case of young permanent teeth where the tooth uh, the root of the tooth has not completely matured so regenerative endodontics is coming up in a big way to uh, you know complete the formation help in the complete formation of the pulpal tissue so that you know the tooth sustains because sustenance of these teeth is very crucial the the, the and there is an entire life of the athlete uh, the athlete is very young and we don't want the athlete to lose these two front teeth because of dental injuries so latest, there are latest lot of material, let's see, because once the teeth are fractured, they tend to be a little bit loose. So splinting is needed. So various types of advances in the splinting materials are now available. Available Flexible splints are available, which, you know, are, uh, uh, which are helping the faster healing of the teeth. Thermoplastic multi-layered mouth guards are come up for better protection, uh, single layer, double layer, triple layer, all these kinds of mouth guards are today now, all, yes, they are also available in India. There are few uh, uh, labs, thermopressed mouth guard labs who are, uh, maybe they are only four to five, but yes, they are there now in India who are fabricating these kind of mouth guards. And like, for example, if there is an athlete doing skating, we can do a single layer mouth guard. If there is a medium uh, contact sport, okay, we can give a double layer mouth guard. If there is a high contact sport, high risk sport like uh, MMA sports or boxing, then we can give a triple layer. So depending on the type of sport, we can definitely make multi layered mouth guards, which will definitely provide better protection. And the International Association of Dental Traumatology is coming up in a big way. There are latest guidelines of dental trauma management given by them. So that is a huge topic. Okay, so all the dentists are definitely going to keep themselves updated regarding this. I am not just talking about sports industry. Overall, there are a lot of dental injuries and accidents taking place all over the world. So, you know, this IADT is focusing on uh, providing guidelines to all the dentists uh, regarding dental trauma management. So sports industry ahead in the future is going to be a culmination of sports medicine and dental medicine, sleep medicine and neuromuscular dentistry, sports nutrition, doping, substance abuse, then uh, advances in facial, dental trauma management, facial trauma management, first aid, special care dentistry wherein we target special Olympics and Paralympic athletes as well, and a lot of dental injury research and policy making for mouth guards. So I think I have, you know, uh, spoken a lot about uh, sports dentistry in general. So before I just end, I would like to just say a little bit about myself. Uh, I am the faculty at ISST Pune, where I am conducting this uh, certificate in sports dentistry course. Uh, 
uh, the course, uh, uh, our course, we have, you know, there is a lot of thought process gone behind this because we don't want, didn't want something which is too complicated for the dentist to learn and understand. It's a three month distance learning program with an online exam, one day practical orientation workshop, study notes and video lectures. Uh, we are available on the student portal and we do all the solving of the queries by phone, emails, etc. The most important thing that we wanted the dentist should do is immediate practical application. And the certificate which is given, it is accredited by ISPA USA. And also the dentist will get a recommendation letter from, uh, from ISST. So, you know, that will help the dentist to associate himself or herself with various because this is very important because, uh, you know, in our country, people don't know what is a sports dentist and what are the uh, uses, uh, why is the sports dentist necessary. So, this type of recommendation, it will definitely help the dentist to uh, get attached with various sports clubs. So I have conducted many one day workshops on sports dentistry at ISST. I have conducted many dental care and dental, in dental injury awareness programs for athletes. I have been a local dental speaker at various places in Pune. I have been felicitated as a regional and national dental speaker on sports dentistry. And of course, you know, since the last uh, two, uh, two years, because of the pandemic, uh, there has been an explosion of uh, webinars everywhere on all kinds of topics. And so I have also not uh, been left behind. I have also been uh, talking on various platforms, whether it is ISST or Dental Reach or any dental platforms and uh, uh, sports injury platforms. I have been talking about sports dental care and sports in, uh, uh, injuries as well. I have been uh, lucky enough to be awarded uh, by many organizations for, you know, uh, leadership into sports dentistry. I'm very humbled uh, and I really thank uh, all my uh, friends and family for, uh, you know, helping being uh, there with me uh, in this journey. And in the end, I would like to say that, you know, prevention is uh, better than cure. Uh, in the same way, uh, sports dentistry is better than, you know, avoidable dentifacial rehab of the athlete. And also, I would like to add here that also the general oral health. So, preventive dental treatments. So, that are also important than getting some full-blown problem in the mouth. And then, because uh, I have been meeting up athletes who have come and told me there was a national level hockey player. So she told me that at the level of the national event, she faced some uh, terrible tooth pain and because of that, her performance got hampered. So that could have been easily prevented by a small dental treatment. So which uh, now she repents that event so much. Her entire life, she is going to, you know, repent that event. So preventive dental treatment and mouth guards are a must for the athletes. Thank you so much uh, for uh, so much patient listening and thank you ISCM for giving me this opportunity. And uh, this is my Facebook page, Sports Dental Care Pune. And even uh, if they want to contact me, they can contact me. My contact details are here. Thank you. Thank you, madam. It was uh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, you know, after all your slides, I mean, uh, sports dentistry is such a, you know, big, uh, you know, big field. Yeah. It was all from the prevent, uh, you know, prevention side. Yeah, uh, the yeah. Treatment side and also for the performance enhancement side also. Three mm -hmm. things is there. Uh, yeah. It's just like a, you know, a specialty of sports medicine. Yeah. yeah. Dentistry is too big. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> So, uh, so I will request if there is any speaker because we purposefully have respected the number of part participants here because already, mm -hmm. you know, the video is going to be on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And many have requested also because you know, because of the timing and all that stuff. Right, right. So, uh, so among the uh, group, uh, the participant, uh, if there is any question, please uh, raise your hand and you can speak directly. If there is any questions. Please uh, raise. I think there is no question at all. <laughs> it's like, uh, the topic is too new, so people are, you know, baffled, yeah, with, baffled with so much of information. <laughs> <laughs> topic topic is very new, and I have learned a lot also. Like, you know, you have said that 
I didn't know that around 3 million tooth loss, you know, annually in sporting, sporting events. If these studies are done in the U.S., just imagine okay. if they are done yeah. in the U.S. and they have so much awareness, awareness yeah. what will happen in our country? This is yeah, huh, done in the fine. U.S. And, and the good thing is majority are, pre are preventable. Yeah, exactly. Majority are preventable. A lot of work and, has to be done. Uh, and, and another important point uh, which I have learned from your talk is the dental injury has carries huge psychological uh, impact also, the depression, yes, yes. You know, psychological because, problem. Yeah, eating and uh, the face value, these two mm -hmm. are ah, major right. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff. And regarding the sports nutrition also, because sports drink are everywhere. Yeah. And they, uh, <laughs> their sports drinks are, you know, they contain all those, uh, you know, sugary stuff. Yeah, you know, they are they they consume like anything, and because of that negative impact on the oral hygiene and all yeah. that, amazing. Because yeah. you know nowadays uh, people are uh, also using they are just rinsing their mouth with the carbohydrate rich. Uh, yeah, yeah, carb rinse. I know that carb yeah. gels, carb rinse. Oh my God, <laughs> so yeah, that's right. endless. <laughs> Yeah, so how can, I mean, the negative effect on uh, your uh, oral yeah. health, is, that's why sports yeah. dentistry, you know, uh, a team sports uh, dentist should uh, come up also. Yeah. And one interesting stuff which I have uh, learned from your talk is regarding the association with, between oral uh, health and the different injury profile, like, you know, skeletal muscle injury, like you have uh, talked about Achilles tendinopathy. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Then yeah. How can how can you imagine? Because we already yeah. know that. Yeah. Even I uh, myself, when I read it for the yeah. first time, I was very surprised. <laughs> mm. Because she connection uh, regarding the dental the health and the certain, you know certain infection like myocarditis, all that yeah. are known. Like rheum yeah. Rheumatoid fever, rheumatoid heart yeah. fever, and all this thing. Yeah. But uh, musculoskeletal, like you know, sports injury, like yeah. uh, and, you know. <laughs> Achilles tendinosis is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And this again uh, tells about the importance of the sports dentistry. Yeah. True. Also, yeah. India, yeah, that's right. Because it is uh, now India, uh, sports medicine itself is very, you know, at a very early stage. So, sports dentistry yeah. has to come with the sports medicine. Yeah. And they have to, exactly. Uh, exactly. Fill up in a very, very big way. Not only yeah. for the injury prevention and management, but also for performance uh, this side. Enhancement, yeah. yeah, yeah. Performance right. enhancement is a very simple uh, thing they have explained is if the if, if the bite is not proper, what mm -hmm. happens is when the mouth guard is worn, if, if the bite is not proper, uh, it will lead to muscle spasms, it will overload the jaw muscles, that will pass to the back muscles, then to the oh. hip muscles, the knee muscles, and finally the ankle. So there oh, have wow. been studies uh, that uh, uh, like in the uh, textbooks on sports dentistry, which I have read, what okay. they are doing is taking podal, podal pressures. Okay, okay. Huh? With okay. mouth guard, without mouth guard. Okay, okay, so okay. what they are detecting is that uh, when mm -hmm. the athlete, the athlete is having some improper bite or some issue with the bite, then mm -hmm. the feet pressure is changing. Oh, is, wow. Huh, this is what they have found out in that one of the studies. And when uh, the athlete is using a custom fabricated mouth guard, so what mm -hmm. happens in a custom fabricated mouth guard, the, whatever the imbalance uh, uh, of the bite is there, while the athlete is wearing that mouth guard, that imbalance is going to go for at least that specific period. Okay, okay, very nice. And yeah. once there is balance in the mouth, all the rest of the entire axis of the body, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. all the muscles come into balance, and that is how the you know the imbalance will uh, go, and the chances of getting injured will go, and mm -hmm. like that the performance will improve. So so many things uh, related to that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Whole kinetics, and I mean, for <laughs> sports medicine physician, all they should know some basic uh, you know concept of sport dentistry. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And sports, the you know dental examination should should be an integral part of the integral participatory part. physical examination. Definitely. And, definitely. And sports See, this might be happening at the national and the international level, but nowhere at the local level, nowhere it is happening. I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, that's right. So we as a society, we will also try to push, uh, you know, right. uh, where for the awareness program and the widespread, you know, we have to, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, we have to bring all the speciality. So exactly. Ultimately, ultimately, injury management, prevention, plus performance enhancement is what we want. And yes, sports exactly. dentistry is absolutely very important. Now, at least I know that it is very important. <laughs> very important. Yeah. 
So, uh, is there any questions from any of the participants? Please unmute yourself. You can speak directly. If there is any questions, I think there is no questions. So, uh, so since thank there you, is no questions, uh, oh, okay, okay, sir. please, uh, uh, please, please speak, please speak. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. So, I have an inquiry that if an athlete lose some teeth during any injury at, in the field, so how will we manage in emergency? So, what can we do in emergency in the field itself? Yeah, yeah. See, basically, the thing is, as I said, you know, this this topic, what she is asking, actually, that is a part of that education uh, program, which I was telling you about. So in that, uh, there are many two main uh, most commonly happening dental injuries. One is the broken tooth. Second is the tooth gets avulsed. Now, suppose if the tooth is broken, the athlete should look for the broken piece. Sometimes it might just happen that the broken piece is just lying somewhere around. Okay, so the patient, the athlete patient has to just pick it up and uh, eventually go to the dentist. The dentist can get it glued to the tooth. If in case the tooth has the, the broken pieces, you know, broken into fragments, then the uh, athlete cannot use the same piece. In that, even in that case, if the athlete goes to the dentist, the, there are tooth colored, as I showed uh, in the uh, photos, the tooth colored composite material, we can just apply it and it will make it look like a natural tooth. Now, this is for the broken tooth. For the avulsed tooth, like if suppose if the tooth has got avulsed, the most important thing that the athlete or the coach, what they have to do is hold the tooth by the crown portion, not at the root portion. You should not touch the root portion of the tooth because that is where the live cells are there, which will get uh, embedded here back in its socket. So once you touch with, with your fingers, it will get all damaged with the bacteria. So you have to hold the tooth, lightly wash it under cold water, gently insert it, hold it with a gauze piece and immediately go to the dental clinic. Now, in case if the athlete is otherwise also injured and it's really not possible, you know, to care, immediately go, then either in the athlete's saliva or saline or best is uh, milk. Because the tooth, it cannot be carried in water because water has doesn't have any nutritional value. Okay, suppose the patient is uh, yet to go to the dentist, say one or two hours from now. So the tooth has to be saved in a nutritionally viable solution like saline or water or best is the athlete's saliva. But it is also recommended that if, if there is no other major injury, only the dental injury is there, then the athlete within an hour, if the athlete goes to the dentist, then definitely the tooth can be saved. And ma'am, if there is any bleeding there, so uh, can we pack or... Um, yeah, 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 definitely. There are uh, um, hemostatic abgel packs. You get small, small packs. So that's what I said, you know, because uh, the sports dental first aid kit, that's what I said that, you know, the athlete, the coach, at least the coach, someone, one person in the team, they have to carry a small first aid kit, which has these small, small, small things, which uh, if the athlete gets injured, immediately you can press that abgel there and the bleeding will stop. Gauze has to be carried, bandage, so many things, uh, small, small things are there, you know, uh, which can be used at that point. Okay, ma'am, thank you. So, uh, a, a participant, if there is any questions left, please ask, because our expert is here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that that lecture is it's a big big uh, yeah, topic like you know right. how mm -hmm. uh, oral health uh, is affecting the exercise and how exercise is affecting the oral health then how mm -hmm. nutrition and oral health are related what sports drink should be taken what should not be uh, taken mm -hmm. or what type of acid in the sports drink is more erosive and mm -hmm. to a lot of lot of topics yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, in that absolutely. so yeah. that's a, that's a separate uh, usually what we uh, you know uh, teach the or uh, explain it to the athletes and the coaches similar lecture we can plan for the sports healthcare professionals as well that you know uh, uh -huh. okay. yeah, yeah yeah absolutely in the future we will plan uh, such type of a small course or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. also uh, because it will idea. be beneficial uh, yeah, it will be yeah. beneficial for everyone right right <laughs>
So thank you very much once yes. again for uh, giving us time and sharing huge knowledge and information <laughs> to us. Yeah. Yes, it has opened a huge window for sports window. medicine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sports science uh, scientists. And I hope in the future also uh, you will keep on, you know, coming to our platform and we will keep on sure. learning. Because we have, to give, uh, you know, we have to learn from one another and, yeah, and collectively we have to grow together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, congratulations for conducting a very nice conference. Uh, it was a really lot of efforts from uh, all of you. And uh, yes, definitely would love to keep associating with ISLCM in the future. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Welcome. Okay, have bye. a great Sunday. <laughs> okay, same to you, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you very much. Yeah.